Box Lesson 23 in our Power Pages uh, series so far. Uh, in this video, we're going to lock down the entire portal. So I'm going to show you how to do that quickly and effectively. So you go over to your home page, you go to page settings, and then you look here at the permission section. And normally what you'd see is anyone can see this page. Yeah, that would be a security problem that you don't want to deal with. So what you want to do is I want to choose who can see this page and then you choose what are called web roles. Um, you'll learn more about them shortly. Uh, authenticated users and administrators will check those off and then we'll just hit OK. I've already done so. So we're done here. Uh, what does that mean for our experience? What it means is that when we click on preview this website, we now have uh, a login screen. And if we don't have an account, then we need to register. So let's go ahead and register for this website. I'm going to use an email that I have easy access to and see if it'll let me. And so I go ahead and register for this. Perfect. Then I have to provide my first name, my last name. Um, I don't have to provide any of this additional information, so I won't right now. And then I'll update this row. So what's going to happen is there's actually a contact in the database. And I do have access to look at this data still. I can go here and view the job details for any of these given jobs, right? Um, what's interesting is the reason we can do that is because if you look at Design Studio and you look at the permission sets that we have in place, we Active Jobs allows authenticated users to look at it. In addition, Active Jobs allows authenticated users and administrators to look at it, and so does Applications. So that's perfectly fine right now. But one of the things we need to do fundamentally is um, get a uh, grasp on the fact that we are a contact in the system. And even though we can see the full list of jobs, there should be another page on the website that shows my jobs and that's sorted by the um, or filtered by the current contact. So um, in our next video, we'll show you how you do that. For now, what I want you to see is that in Dynamics or Power Apps, you have these contacts and it's created a contact for me, but I have to manually assign it a web role. So I have to add the authenticated user web role for Power Apps Talent Engage. When I add that authenticated user web role to this user, I now have access to the jobs table and to the applications table based on the access that I decided to give, by the way, which you can see here, um, I gave um, at the job level, I gave read, append, and append to, so just the ability to look at them and associate records. And at the application level, I, get, I gave read, update, create, append, and append to, so everything but delete. And at the note level, we have just the ability to create an append, which is perfectly fine. So at the end of the day, I just want you to understand that what we've done is we've locked down the portal. Um, it's based on authenticated users or administrative users, and that's it. And if you don't have a web role, then you're in, you're in trouble. So what could it be about this contact that we can leverage to know when we need to associate that authenticated um, uh, user web role? Well, it's not that complicated. If you look at um, this security stamp value here, this is always going to be um, uh, populated. And so is the username. So whenever we have a contact, which is either created or updated, that has a username and a security stamp value, we will assign them the security role that we need to assign them. So we're going to do that in a Power Automate job on our next video. So looking forward to that. Thank you.